Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Olympus, the Olympus Lock 725RD-DW-VH-US4. This is a drawer lock or a cabinet lock. This is a very common type of lock that is used in woodworking and casework uh, in applications where you have, sorry, I was holding it upside down, in applications where you have a need for a robust cabinet lock or a drawer lock or a lock to secure a couple of panels. Cam locks aren't going to work. Uh, they're too light duty. Uh, they don't give you the sort of integrity that you need with the key or the control that you may need over the key. They're not necessarily used in those applications um, cam locks would, you know, not be used in applications where uh, a substantially higher volume of use would be on it. A cam lock is appropriate maybe for a mailbox lock or, you know, something, uh, you know, that you're seeing maybe in a toolbox in the sense that you're just trying to secure something. Well, this line of the 725s uh, from Olympus is a very robust platform of drawer lock, cabinet lock, some sort of uh, larger woodwork or casework that requires uh, something more substantial, but also, uh, and this is really where the big part is, uh, requires the uh, ability to accept a small format interchangeable core cylinder. Okay, what is that? Let's talk about it. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. A small format interchangeable core or cylinder is going to be representative of the most common type of removable or interchangeable core that exists. The small format, SFIC, small format interchangeable core, was invented and patented by Frank Best. He is the founder of Best Lock Company. Uh, at least, you know, uh, I think it was patented in about 1921. The small format principle, the core that we all know and use today is not the exact one on that patent, um, but the principle is undeniably the same uh, in terms of how it operates, meaning you can extract the core, the key portion, and the cylinder that the key goes into, leaving in place the housing, the mortise housing, the rim housing, the casework lock like this, whatever it might be that you're inserting it into, the rest of it stays put. So if you have an installation where you have small format cylinders on the exterior doors, on the interior doors, on the chain link padlocked gates around the perimeter of the property, it would go to uh, reason that the, the interior doors where there are locked, um, who knows what, you know, someone's desk where they need to lock up, you know, payroll records, you would want that same lock itself to be on that same key system. Uh, and that's where you will see this uh, sort of material. The purpose of small format or large format or full size interchangeable core is, or its platform, its um, very existence is contributed to the fact that the convenience over that key system is extremely high in the sense that you can instantly, within seconds, remove a core and put in a new core. Um, that certainly comes out of the world of needing to immediately control rights and privileges over that lock right now immediately, put a new core in that, in that lock. Full size doors, padlocks, chain link gates, cabinet and drawer locks as well, okay? So that's where you're gonna use this. Um, you wouldn't want to introduce into that you know, let's say it's, you know, like I had said, locking up payroll records. Let's say it's a, you know, a company that has 500 employees and they've got small format everywhere. Yeah, you're going to probably want uh, cl uh, maybe classified or restricted information or confidential information to be under that same keying system. Not some disk wafer cam lock that um, would not, you know, a absolutely provide much security. Um at all, in fact. So let's talk about what this is. Well, let's visually demonstrate it. This is a deadbolt, okay, 
That bolt can be thrown. This is going to include a temporary plastic, what they would call a construction core, that will allow you to install the lock, test the lock, make sure that it works, everything's in alignment. That can stay in there until the owner or the owner's representative installs the permanent cores or installs construction cores. Temporary full-size cores that will stick right in there like a, a best cylinder or a, any clone of that best cylinder. Best patented it and there has been countless copies and clones and uh, you know accused uh, patent infringement lawsuits over the small format platform. And now today, every manufacturer basically makes a small format cylinder that will fit into this. Practic everyone does. And the reason that everyone does is because these small format are everywhere. So you could pass a Medico system into a best lock in invention in an Olympus lock in a, you know, in a, in a cabinet or a drawer lock application. So the 725. This is a vertical lock. They are available in different orientations, which we'll look at in a moment. Left, right, bottom, whatever it might be. Some basic dimensional properties, and then we'll switch to the screen view and take a closer look at the supporting information. The overall width of the mounting area looks like it's about two and three quarter. The overall height of the body itself, well, of the flange is about two and an eighth. The projection of the cylinder housing is about an inch and an eighth, maybe inch and a sixteenth, yeah, inch and a sixteenth. This is the US-4 in the part number. This is um, satin brass is what that's meant to infer. I don't know the base material of this. I uh, would not be surprised if that was solid brass or, ma or machined from brass. The outside diameter of that is about an inch and an eighth. This is going to include a strike, and the strike is going to be mounted you know, in an orientation like like this, okay, like this. So the bolt is retracted, the door comes and closes, the bolt gets thrown and that's held on in that sort of orientation, okay. You're going to get a total of four screws, okay, just four mounting screws are in my hand here. You're going to need two for the strike, You're going to need two for the lock body. There's one final thing in here, and that's a spacer. This little disc, this is called a spacer. Um, that is for this. This can accept a 5-pin, a 6-pin, or a 7-pin length core. In the world of best, or the world of, in the world of best, uh, in certainly small format, absolutely, but in best, 5-pin is, from what I would think, would be very uncommon. They make it. I've never personally seen one. 6-pin would be extremely common. 7-pin would also be extremely common. The 7-pin cylinder is physically longer because it's got one more chamber. This is prepped to take a 7-pin. If you're installing 6-pin, put that spacer behind your core as it goes in or drop that spacer down first. If you happen to have 5-pin cores, you'll need two of these. We can sell you these spacers separately. And then again, finally, that plastic construction core, which is an extremely nice added bonus of buying the Olympus version because they are not the only people who make these locks, uh, suffice it to say, but not all of them will include this because what you want to do is test your installation when you're done. Make sure it actually works. Um, and it's very probable that the person, the contractor who has the carpenter and the carpenter uh, apprentice who are doing all the work um, are probably specifically intended to not have access to the long-term or permanent keys. In fact, no one is likely permitted to have access to those. The owner and the owner's rep, they would come in at the end and install all their cores, however that would work. So the fact that you'll be able to test your lock right out of the box allows you to finish your project and walk away. Let's switch to the screen view now and let's take a closer look at some supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at. Let's take a look at the images that we have posted down below first. There it is in its packaging, the components, the body and the construction core, and then some views of the body itself. 
the back side. Top view showing the bolt coming out and then the accessories. Okay, now extended description information down below is here. Small format IC core deadbolt lock. I want to open up something that will be relevant um, and simply want to show you that patent. We'll let that run for a minute. Small format IC core deadbolt lock, rim mounting. Rim mount uh, is uh, not synonymous with uh, surface mount necessarily, um, meaning if you have a rim lock, that rim lock is surface mounted, but you could have a rim cylinder and a rim cylinder is not surface mounted. Um, a rim cylinder, is, that term rim and cylinder are meant to, I think, infer that it's gonna be used with a rim lock. And they're using the term rim here to give you the impression that, yes, this is mostly surface mounted or the body is surface mounted, but there will be preparation through the door uh, to allow access on the other side of the door for the uh, key, basically. The cylinder, the key. Standard function, key removable in locked and unlocked position. Standard locks are non-handed. Some of them are handed. Key removable in locked or unlocked position. That's also called the industry term key retaining or non-key retaining. I think it's self-explanatory. Uh, key retaining function is where the key can be removed in the locked position only. Key retaining function available. Pardon me. Key retaining function available for drawer vertical configuration only. So by means of that logic, uh, we're going to have uh, a key retaining model here. And um, what that means to demonstrate that, what happens to demonstrate that, I was saying, what happens is when you have the core installed in a key retaining function, which this is not a key retaining function, um, it's, it's lacking that part of the part number. Um, you can't, as I said earlier, the key will only come out when you're in the locked position. That might be what you want. You don't want people to leave the unit unlocked, and we'll discuss that in a moment. So the long and short of it, this is a non-key retaining model. They also tell you, the manufacturer does, that this is equivalent to the best 5L7RD. This is vertical versus left, right, or down. Gives you some dimensional properties. It's in a satin brass finish. They're calling it US4. US4 is indeed the term for satin brass. A link uh, to the included accessories is here. And then also a link to some optional accessories, which we'll get to in a moment. Core is not included. That's very um, much a misunderstood component when it comes to small format. Back in the old days, if you ordered a best lock, there was no cylinder included. That cylinder had to be ordered from best by the building owner directly and provided separately. Nowadays, you can absolutely order the cylinder when you buy a best lock. And why am I talking about best when it comes to an Olympus lock body? I'm talking about the standard common group think when it comes to knowing what is included in the box when you order something small format. Cylinders in the door hardware industry are always a separate line item in terms of specifying them as best practice. Um, not included with the lock, though when you buy a lock it's going to have the cylinder included. But to list that out it would be appropriate to list it separately. The small format universe inherently means cylinders are a separate line item. I've had clients order these locks and then ask, where are the cylinders? Where are the keys? That they're, they're not included. We have, to, we have to do that separately. Because this is small format, this will accept cores that are made from Best, Arrow, Falcon, KSB, Schlage, SFIC, or equivalent small format co cores, small format interchangeable core. The fact of the matter is, lots of people make them. Medico, Yale, countless clones and copies. 
Um, I'm sure other ASA companies do, like Yale and Corbin Russwin. I know that Yale does. Um, electronic cylinders can be done here as well. The point is, is what the, here's the point. Olympus Lock is selling you the lock body. They're not selling you the high security core or the Falcon core that you will need to go into this. You might just not be buying 5L7RDs. You like the Olympus 725RD. Um, and, uh, you know, you know that you're buying cores separately. They're sold as each. When you buy one, we'll ship you one. Let's go through these documents that are linked to down below. There is a link to the document called Catalog Page. This is a pretty handy document because it will allow you to quickly understand all of the different units. So what hand do you have, right or left? You've got a VH or an IH. So that's going to stand for vertical or inverted. Up or down is what that boils down to. The finishes that are available, the cylinder length that is available. Um, how much longer does, does the cylinder length need to be than what you're going through? You know, I'm not aware of a absolute standard, but it does need to stand proud ever so slightly, um, would be my guess. Inch and a sixteenth would be the shortest length available, but they can push it out two inch and three eighths. These are all non-key retaining. The two ver versions that are key retaining are here, and they will both be vertical, uh, up, shown like this. Okay. The IH is not shown, but it's just this. It's just turned over, is what it is. They're handed the four different ways, up, down, right, or left, because of how where the bolt is oriented in relationship to the housing for the core and how the core inserts uh, into that housing. Let's go to the next document, which is data sheet. I imagine some of this is going to be a duplication. It is, you know, the same sort of information is here. Does detail the handing chart that's here. The accessories shows the handing a little bit better as well. Finishes that are available. I'll leave that to you to discover the rest of this information, but I will point out that it's grade one, which is the most stringent of performance standards that exists within the industry. That means it's been cycled at least a million times, one million times, and has been found to be uh, compliant with that minimum cycle count. Who knows how many cycles it could go to. A funny story about cycle counts and grading, uh, not related to Olympus at all, and these two companies don't overlap whatsoever, but Bomber, the only hinge manufacturer that's 100% domestically manufactured, they to say that they make spring hinges would, would be the most epic understatement. They're the name most synonymous with spring hinges. I had asked the chief, the engineer there, I was an, at the factory in the room where they conduct the testing and where ANSI comes to confirm and validate their testing results. You know, um, he was testing a hinge, a spring hinge on his, on his apparatus. And I says, well, how many, you know, how long did it go? How, you know, before the hinge broke, he says, I don't know. I unplugged the machine at 7 million cycles. So the point is, is who knows, you know, how many, you know, this doesn't break on the million and first cycle. This could go probably in, this could go for decades is just the simple bottom line. So let's move to the architectural specifications. This is going to be only uh, intended for those people who need to uh, convey to another party exactly what they want. This could be picked up and put into construction documents. I won't cover it here. Installation instructions. This is pretty simple. You're just going to drill a hole, a nice clean hole at the proper distance. Um, <clears throat> they are not giving us a back set here, so we'll see if we can determine that. Yeah, well, they kind of are. Seven, well, seven eighths, we can infer to the center of that cylinder to the edge of the lock body, seven eighths. You can see that that's going to, they're, they're showing it standing flush with the top of the unit. Sure, why not? I would make it flush. If I was going to do anything, I'd make it flush or hold it back, you know, not more than 30 thousandths. But the point is, is I think they're showing you seven eighths as the back set. Back set is a term that is referencing the edge of the door to the center of the hole. Um, and it, it doesn't apply at all to uh, drawers, but what I'm drawing here is some shapes. 
I've got four door styles here. Square, beveled, rabbited, radius. Back set is the dimension from the center of the thickness to where the hole would be. Not from here or from here. That'll, that'll, that will work on a square edge door, but that trick won't work on a beveled edge door. Because if you mark back 7 eighths on a beveled edge door, you're going to be in the wrong position. Doesn't matter with what we're working on in this case, but back set. Back set can be the where you drill a hole. Back set can also be where you apply a reinforcement. Like if you were doing a Dutch door uh, and you were going to use a Dutch door bolt to secure the top leaf to the bottom leaf, the uh, factory ought to ask you at what back set are you going to install the bolt so we know where to weld in our reinforcing. Cylinder installation instructions. Um, with all interchangeable or removable cores, there is a control key. There are different types of control keys, meaning control keys and the lug or the disc that the control key controls to retain the cylinder in the housing are different from different manufacturers. The principles of locksmithing, how that second shear line is accomplished, is different in many manufacturers. But the bottom line is, You'll take your core and insert your control key, and you'll turn the control key one way or the other. It's probably clockwise. It's absolutely clockwise in a small format system. You'll pull back what they call locking bar. That's really called the control lug. You'll insert that into this housing. You'll note that your key is askew, probably 15 degrees clockwise. Once it's in, bring it back counterclockwise to vertical. With, the, with your fingernail on your index finger if you're right-handed push against the face of this at the same time well actually your middle finger with your index finger and your thumb you're gonna pull the key out so you'll make sure the core stays in place as you extract the key I won't read all this it's super simple if you're installing these you probably know full well how to do that handing chart that's important to know how these work um, from what I can tell they do these like safes. <clears throat> to me, this door will swing out. I would call this a right-hand reverse. Some people might call it a left-hand. Um, a right-hand. You know, some people will call it a left-hand outswing. Um, in the safe world, that's a right hand. In the safe world, in the cabinet world, those doors always swing out. So you know. Hinges are on the right, it swings towards you, it's called the right hand. Anyway, not to get stuck in the mud on terminology, just follow um, the, the description that they're showing here and understanding that our view here shows it swinging out towards us. That exhausts all of those catalog cuts. Uh, there is a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page, and from there we can pull up not only all of the Olympus material that we sell, by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. I would very much encourage you to view this catalog because if you're dealing with cam locks or cylinder locks, disc or pin tumbler that are smaller in their footprint, not full size locks, mortise locks, cylindrical locks, tubular locks. If you're looking for a very high quality company when it comes to their products, not only in their product, but their technical support. There is a gentleman at Olympus who is extremely helpful every single time. He knows who he is, and to him I say thank you very much. Um, you know, you can, depending on your experience and, you know, how you view this catalog, there may be only so much you can pull out of the catalog to satisfy your question. Being able to contact the factory is crucial. I have used Olympus material to provide customers with solutions that they could not find elsewhere. And the case in point is the National Park Service, you know, a branch of the government, needed cam locks, but they were dissatisfied with the cam locks that they were using because the keys were always breaking. Well, Olympus manufactures a cam lock that will take a full size key. They manufacture a cam lock that will take uh, a small format interchangeable court style key. The National Park Service did not have small format installed elsewhere, but the bottom line is I was able to give them a cam lock 
that would accept a full-size key because they were literally breaking the keys of these small cam lock keys that they were using. Not only were we able to do that, but we gave them what that best A keyway or whatever keyway it was, a more robust keying system as well. And I'm going to scroll to the page and find that lock. And uh, here it is, the B7 cam lock takes a full-size key and a cam lock. Not only that, they also, Olympus does also have cam locks that will take uh, removable cores as well. This 920 is for Schlage, what Schlage would call full-size interchangeable core, and then also um, a their 820 that will um, accept keyway, Schlage C keyway. So that's going to take a full-size key. Not any other people really make those that I'm familiar with. Uh, I'm sure someone else does. Uh, I would think that it's not exclusive to um, Olympus, but um, they're the only ones I can think of. Lots of lock options here. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. In conclusion, it's... Uh, enjoyable to work with Olympus on all fronts. Their fit and finish is always very good. There's utility in the product. There's a confluence of value and quality. Their technical support, as I mentioned earlier, is stellar. Uh, the availability of product is pretty good. Lots of it's in stock, and if it's not, it generally runs on a pretty good lead time, uh, pretty uh, decent, uh, relatively quick lead time. Um, so be, keep all that in mind before you're ordering just from the people that you've always ordered from. You may not use Olympus, and if you haven't, I would suggest that you uh, take a leap and give them a try, maybe on an isolated installation, just to see how you like the quality of the product and service. They've never let me down, is the bottom line. Any questions on the Olympus 725RD-DW-VH or any other uh, Olympus product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you very much. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.